All right, the Ministry of External Affairs is now holding a joint press conference on the G7 and Prime Minister Narendra Modi who will be visiting Italy for the G7 summit. Let's, li let's listen into what uh, the press conference uh, is all about. And what are we going to uh, the G7 in Italy with our proposal on artificial intelligence? One Secretary, I'm Sahil from ANI. Uh, what would be the issues of Global South that PM Modi likely to address in this year's uh, G7 summit? Hey, thank you very much. Uh, let me take uh, uh, the question relating to India's participation at the Peace Summit first because uh, I'm making an assumption there could be other questions uh, in the second round, so let me address them up in front. Uh, India will be participating at the uh, Peace Summit, which is to be held in Switzerland, at an appropriate level. Uh, that consideration is currently going on in the system. And as and when we have a decision on uh, the representative from India who would be participating, we'll be very happy to uh, share it with you. Uh, you know, with regard to the uh, question on, on Ukraine, India's position, uh, what the G7 would focus on therein, uh, as I mentioned to you in my, in my opening remarks, uh, during this summit, the, while the G7 would focus on block sets of agenda in terms of their own discussions, the discussions that would be taken up in the outreach part of the summit would uh, essentially focus on artificial, intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence, energy, uh, and Mediterranean, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to you. The other agenda items are essentially uh, confined to the discussions only among the G7 countries. Those are not for the outreach summit. Uh, having said that, it is quite natural that in the bilateral sideline discussions, conversations, the meetings that the Honorable Prime Minister will have, uh, uh, it is to be expected that the uh, ongoing developments across the world of significance will come up for discussion. Naturally, Ukraine, uh, uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict is one of them. And uh, like we have done always in the past uh, at such international gatherings, uh, we would be sharing our perspective, which is well known. Uh, we have always maintained that uh, uh, the dialogue and diplomacy is the best option. Um, you, you would recall uh, Prime Minister's own uh, uh, statement on this, that today is not an era of war, which found uh, widespread uh, appreciation uh, and recognition. Uh, as far as the impact of war is concerned, uh, right from the time that it started, in terms of the uh, derivative impact on food, fuel, and fertilizer availability, the challenges that it caused to the supply chain uh, globally, uh, and caused disruptions in the global economy. Uh, we have always been in the forefront to talk about not just the conflict, the need for dialogue and diplomacy, but also the way the conflict has impacted on the priorities and interests of the developing countries, uh, such as the one, some of which I highlighted. Um, we have always, uh, uh, at the same time, also been in forefront to come forward and offer assistance wherever we can to alleviate some of these challenges which uh, the countries of Global South have faced because of the conflict. Uh, we have also provided, and has also provided, humanitarian assistance to Ukraine, as also to uh, countries of the uh, Global South, at least in those areas and some of those areas which were impacted, uh, which have been impacted by, by the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict. Uh, so I think on, on, on Russia-Ukraine, Russia, this would be a, a, a continuous sharing of our perspective with the world leaders on the sidelines. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.